Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by PlayStation 5. A rainy day at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, but a big game in the ACC. Undefeated North Carolina. Undefeated Virginia Tech. Two teams ranked in the top 20. An early power struggle in a conference trying to make a comeback and prove it's not just Clemson that we should be talking about in the ACC. We've been talking about coronavirus, and we have been talking about its impact on college football all summer and fall long, and boy, has it impacted Virginia Tech. Their opener moved to later in September. Then practice was paused because of an outbreak for the Hokies. Their game against Virginia postponed until December. They play their opener, minus 23 players and win. They play last week against Duke, Duke minus 21 players and win. How many players will they be without today? Boy, Dr. Jerry Punch, the hits just keep on coming for the Hokies. They do, Bob, and hello, everyone. You know, folks, after all the absences the past couple of weeks, the news is finally good for the Hokies at Virginia Tech. Today, for the first time, they will have every single full-time assistant coach available to him and just 15 total players out, not nearly as many as the past two weeks. Now, here's the bad news, that the bulk of those 15 players are on defense, mostly at one position group, and that could be a recipe for disaster against a strong arm quarterback like North Carolina's Sam Howell. Bob? Well, with the legend, Dr. Jerry Punch, Bob Wachusen, Dan Orlovsky, it is amazing that this Virginia Tech team has survived all of this, and yet they're 2-0. It's an incredible story in college football that they, they've not only fielded a team, but they've won two games and looked well. They get their defensive coordinator back today, and Justin Fuente has said, listen, through all this I've learned, flexibility over regiment. Virginia Tech won the toss, deferred their option to the second half, and we are underway, a top 20 matchup, and a top 10 team in North Carolina. And there's a reason why, Dan, they are a top 10 team. They have a quarterback that can light you up. He's outstanding outside of the pocket. He's outstanding inside of the pocket. He's definitely grown in every aspect of the position. Ball distribution, his eye discipline, running their huddle, knowing situational football. He's got two outstanding playmakers on the outside. He's my version of college football is Russell Wilson. I love watching him play. I think he's got an opportunity to have a big day against a beat-up secondary. Well, when you're Sam Howell and you break records that had just been set by Trevor Lawrence, not too bad. Last season, more yards and touchdowns than Trevor Lawrence. Broke Trevor Lawrence's true freshman record for touchdown passes in the ACC. And if North Carolina can run the ball effectively today and set up play action for Sam Howell, they will be tough to stop and Michael Carter has a gain of five on first down. The heels waste no time. How to the air. Out to the edge to Bo Corrales. A couple of yards shy of a first down. Jermaine Waller made the stop. I think that's something that North Carolina, North Carolina wants to do early. Get the ball out of Sam Howell's hands, get some completions, get themselves just comfortable in this game instead of trying to force the ball downfield. The tight end's got a first down, Garrett Walston. Converts on third down and two. Nicely designed play, and Sam Howell executes it to perfection. Yeah, really good. Third and two, you put formation into the boundary, and if they blitz, you just kick it out there. Good blocking on the perimeter by the North Carolina receivers. That's exactly why that second play, that second down play was such a big deal. Javante Williams up the middle for a first down and more. Look at 22 right there, hanging. He's hanging on Sam Howell as a runner, and he's not able to close that gap there. That's why some of these zone reads, the RPOs, as long as the quarterback is willing to run the football and hurt you a little bit, cause those defenders to play hesitant football. Howell, another hookup with Daz Newsom. He's got a first down. You know, Daz Newsom, in the spring game, had a ball go right through his hands. And the wide receiver coach, Lonnie Galloway, said, can you see okay? Yeah. That hit you in the chest plate. Maybe we should go to the eye doctor. Not long after that, contact lenses. Really? Pretty good idea a for good a wide receiver. And <laughs> there he know. is, making catches out on the edge. He caught everything after he could see. Right up the middle, once again breaking tackles is Michael Carter. 
and it's first and goal for North Carolina. Virginia Tech brings the pressure. You shut it down, 75, pull around, kick out. Michael Carter's a very fast back that's got great vision, loves to get downhill. Carter again on first and goal. Keeps his legs churning and gets turned back inside the two at about the one-yard line. It will be second down and goal eventually. Norrell Pollard was able to stand him up. North Carolina running a couple more big bodies on the field. Tight end comes off. Extra offensive lineman comes on. This is where they've grown in their offense development-wise with Sam Hamill. Sam Howell, he is a viable runner here. Keep your eyes on him with his own read. Javante Williams at 220 pounds lines up as the deep back. He takes the handoff. Goal line. Touchdown. North Carolina made it look awfully easy on their first possession. Pulling offensive linemen, clean up a hole. Great vision by Javante Williams. No reason to follow the pull. You see a seam, finish it. An 11-play, 75-yard touchdown drive to start for North Carolina. Grayson Atkins knocks through the point after. Undefeated, eighth in America, and a 7-0 lead. Javante Williams, already with five touchdown runs on the season. A rainy, muggy day, Chapel Hill. But a football Saturday, and the number eight team in America off to a very good start. An 11-play, 75-yard touchdown drive. For North Carolina. They ran it six times. They threw it five times. Six different players touch the football. And there might be three different players that touch the football from under center today, Dan, for Virginia Tech. We might see all three quarterbacks. Well, I mean, I, Justin Puente thinks that he's got two bona fide starters, and Hendon Hooker is a little bit more of a uh, on rhythm timing player more traditional quarterback where Braxton Burmeister is a little bit more recess style of football tries to be a playmaker Played pretty well last week in a win and so it'll be interesting not only who starts but then if Hendon Hooker gets some snaps Burmeister does get the start but we expect that Hendon Hooker will make an appearance at some point they'll start it on the ground and that's Khalil Herbert and gets out to about the 30-yard line. It's a gain of five on first down. Now, Burmeister is the Oregon transfer. He was Justin Herbert's backup and then made the move to Virginia Tech. And he has now had an opportunity to become the starter with Hendon Hooker. Ready to play at the start of the season, but then a non-COVID-related illness has kept him out. But apparently he's rehabbed and has practiced enough to have a chance to play, but Burmeister is the starter. I think Justin Puente is going, okay, Burmeister, you, you gave us a chance, you've got a ton of practices, and you come off a win. You know, I think it's hard to take a kid off the field after that. There's pressure coming off the top of the screen, number four right here. You gotta handle their pressure. Are you sure that's where the pressure is coming from with this Carolina defense? You never know, right? It comes from the other side, and Burmeister makes a man miss, and that ball is jarred free. In and out of the hands of Trey Turner. As Dr. Jerry Punch on the sideline, Bob Shoes and Dan Orlovsky. Is there actually a chance Virginia Tech will snap the football? This is going to have to be a kick, right? And it is. A pooch punt from the quarterback, Burmeister, and it certainly gets the job done. They will flip field position all the way down to the North Carolina. 17-yard line. 7-0. Well, can't stand up to the run here. As Michael Carter looks like he has another North Carolina first down. Coach Punch brings up a great point. I wrote down in my notes after that first North Carolina drive, you hurt the blitz and you tested the eyes of Virginia Tech. So they got to get better at that real quick in this first quarter. Like, when they're going to call their pressures, the guys have to get to the certain spots, the correct places. If a guy blitz and you're the safety that's supposed to replace, you got to replace. And then they got to have better eye discipline for everything that's going on in the backfield of North Carolina. Play action. Howell incomplete at the feet of Deami Brown. 
And that's a challenge for the defense. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's challenging when you go, okay, linebackers, you guys are going to pressure safety. You've got to come down. But then I go, okay, coach, you want me to replace the linebacker, but then the, the guy, the tight end, is going into the flat or something like that. So it's, it's about doing it at the right time with great discipline and understanding kind of the tiers of how you go about doing things. Replacing, eyes in the right place, stop the run, get to the pass. Al on the slant, and this time perfectly thrown. Gaz Newsom breaking tackles across the 50. They're just crushing this RPO game. The nickel stays too high. Daz Newsom replaces them, and you see a little bit of athletic ability. See that nickel defender drop underneath, kind of lost in space. But the athletic ability after the catch, that's what North Carolina's living in right now. It is just a heavy dose of the RPO game, and I mentioned the eyes. Jet sweep on the end around to Newsom. He's got blockers, and he's got about eight yards. Cut down by Jermaine Waller, but second down and two. And I think Phil Longo, the offensive play caller from North Carolina, you know, I think great play callers right now attack defenders, not just defenses. And I think he's looking at Chamari Connor, the, the nickel for Virginia Tech, number 22, and going, okay, this is the guy right here. This is the guy that they feel they can attack. Play action. Sam Howell going up top. Look at end zone. Caught. Deami Brown. Did he get a toe down? It looks like he did. That's a Carolina touchdown. What a beautiful job by Sam Howell in the pocket. Love the air on the throw. Deami Brown, get your feet in. Very close. Very close. Did he catch the football before the left foot stepped out? Got it. That looks like a touchdown. That right foot looked like it got down, huh? Right there. Great camera work. And it's a two-touchdown North Carolina lead. A methodical first drive, and now the big play second drive. Great job early on in this drive with the run-pass option. And Sam Howell, Sam Powell, Sam Howell hangs in the pocket. Beautiful air, touchdown, Tar Heels. <laughs> Bob Wyshusen, Dan Orlovsky, Dr. Jerry Punch. Very impressive Tar Heels start. Up by two touchdowns midway through the first quarter. And this will be a touchback on the kickoff. Let's see if Virginia Tech can now respond. Quarterback run for Burmeister. And he spins for three yards. Brought down by Don Chapman. Virginia Tech is a run first, run second football team. 14-0, I get all that. You still have to stay patient. Stay committed to your game plan. Don't try to change who you are because of what the scoreboard says right now. Stay committed to your run game. Play action. Burmeister floats one down the sideline, and it's broken up into triple, if not quadruple coverage for James Mitchell. 7-14 to go in the first quarter, and it's 14-0 heels and a third down for Virginia Tech. Watch Gamel, 44 right here. He's the communicator. He, he runs the show when it comes to what's going on pre-snap check-wise. Jeremiah out of the pocket. One-on-one -on -one against Gamel in the open field. And Jeremiah Gimmel makes the tackle. And it is a third down stop for North Carolina. I just think this kid's such a good football player, super smart, plays the position like a quarterback, runs the defense at the line of scrimmage, because this is a defense that loves to do a ton of stuff. It looks like Star Wars, just a ton of moving parts. And you better have somebody that knows what's going on. Gimmo's outstanding at it. Well, we asked Jay Bateman, the defensive coordinator for the Heels, about Jeremiah Gimmel. He said, look, he is our alpha male. He is the guy that we run our defense through. How well protected wheel route to Javante Williams. They are dicing up this Hokies defense. I love it. Looking from the mesh from the right side, bring those receivers across, forces that defender again to play hesit hesitant football. Connor, number 22, talked about it. Just a little hesitation. Sam Howell kicks it out to the back. Easy throw, big game. Back 
time it's cut down at the line of scrimmage. Daz Newsom made the catch, and immediately Jermaine Waller was right at his ankles. Well, Waller just anticipates this play, kind of guesses. He's seen a couple of those balls that have gone out to the flat, bubbles and whatnot. He knifes inside of Corrales and upends it. Daz Newsom. Really good job, but I promise you this, Phil Longo saw that, and he said, okay, corner, you're going to do that. We're going to do one of these bubble pumps, and we're going to send a guy down the sideline. Avoids a sack, tucks it under, slides near the first down, takes a shot, out come the flags, and Shamari Connor might be done. The moment Howell starts to give himself up, he becomes a defenseless player. This would be targeting if this is ruled forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. At the very least, it's a personal foul. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 22, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Good job by Howell of making a bad play into a good one. Four. As already now, North Carolina with a two-touchdown leads in the red zone. Devontae Williams breaks a tackle. Breaks another to the goal line. And he's in for another Carolina touchdown. Very physical run by Williams. Smells the goal line. A little bit of a hurdle step. How about that balance right there? Definitely a touchdown. A great physical athletic run by Javante Williams. Two hundred and twenty four total yards for North Carolina. Thirteen yards for Virginia Tech and the second rushing touchdown for Javante Williams. 21-0. I think when we watched the tape to get ready for this game, your impression was North Carolina's the better team. Oh, yeah. Hard to imagine you thought they were this much better. This is a dominant performance in the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, but in our conversation, I said, listen, if North, North Carolina has not played nearly as good as they could in their first two games, and they won, obviously. And I said, listen, if they play a A game, they're just too good. They're too talented on the outside. They're too good up front. They got two really good backs, one of the best quarterbacks in America. And I think their defense is fantastic. And right now, through 11 minutes of this football game, they look like an A game right now for the Tar Heels. Hendon Hooker looking on like, might be my opportunity to come play. But here comes all this potential pressure on a North Carolina's defense that you've got to try and decipher. Well, Burmeister may give way to Hooker before too long. But this time against a third down pressure look, he's able to find Nick Gallo for a much needed Hokies first down. Good job motioning the tight end. Gallo across. They catch him on the blitz. The ball gets out before the pressure can get there in a good completion. That's where they're going to have to try and be really good with pre-snap motion to confuse North Carolina defensively. And then don't wait. Snap the football. Look at communication. Look at the back end communication right here for North Carolina. Chapman communicating. Morrison, what, who's doing what where? Burmeister. He's got about five yards. I thought your comment this week that perfectly summed up the North Carolina defense was, don't trust them, they're all liars. Yeah, it, it's, right? it's because as a quarterback, you stand at the line of scrimmage, well, you'll watch tape and you'll be like, okay, I can get tells off what the defense is doing for this person or alignment or front, okay? And then you get to line of scrimmage and you're trying to see if your preparation is accurate. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, that guy, he should have been playing cover two, but he played cover three. <laughs> or that guy looked like he was blitzing, but he didn't. And, it's just you can't believe anything that your eyes tell you pre-snap. Bubble screen. Trey Turner dodging tacklers. Gets loose. Down the sideline goes Turner. Stays in bounds. Written out finally by Don Chapman. But a big play sprung by the Hokies. Gets them in position to get on the scoreboard. 
Ball out, blocking on the perimeter. Trey Turner's a playmaker. Explosive guy. How many big play Trey? How many touches can they get in his hands? And you see the elusiveness in the open field, and then the ability to get down the sideline. This is what Virginia Tech's offense needed. You know, like, try to loosen up this defense for North Carolina a little bit. You got a huge third down conversion, and then you get a playmaker with the ball in his hands on the perimeter. I'll keep it on the ground here with Raheem Blackshear. The Rutgers transfer picks up about a yard and a half. You know, very interesting right now to North Carolina defensively. They got all 11 guys about 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Their defensive coordinator, Jay Bateman, has said, we are, you're not going to run the football on us. We're not going to lose this game because we're, we're so scared of the deep ball. We're going to make you run versus our defenders close to the football, and if our corners play well, you can't throw the ball on us downfield. Low snap. Burmeister gets a block, takes a hit, and is close to a first down. That brings up a very important red zone third down for Virginia Tech. Down 21 to nothing. This is Just from a, a, yeah, from a mental standpoint, you can't imagine a field goal does too much for them. And I think they've got something. When they, when they put those three receivers to one side of the field and leave the tight end to... The other side of the field by himself, they've got some really successful quarterback run going back that way. This is third and one becomes second and one right now for their offense as a play call with Brad Cornelson. This is a second and one play call. You're going for it on fourth down. First down carry by Raheem Blackshear. It is first and goal for Virginia Tech, and that should take us to the end of the first quarter, unless the Hokies line up quickly and snap it, but down to 10 seconds to go in what has been a North Carolina-dominated first quarter, but Virginia Tech in a goal-to-go situation, and that will indeed take us to the end of the first. Dominant performance by the Heels in the opening quarter. Couple of touchdown runs for Javante Williams. We'll come back with the start of the second quarter after these messages. A word from our ABC stations. Braxton Burmeister in a goal-to-go situation against North Carolina. Guess who played for North Carolina back in the 80s? His father, Danny. He's a Hokie fan today, though. How about a handoff to the tight end for a walk-in touchdown? James Mitchell. Can't imagine that was what North Carolina was expecting. And what a vital touchdown drive for the Hokies to get on the board. See the tight end come from the right side. Great cutoff blocks on the front side. You lead with Herbert on a front side block and just really creative. I mean, it's, it's very creative. Instead of putting the tight end at the line of scrimmage, in a traditional alignment, they bring him into the backfield and just hand him as a positionless player rather than just a tight end. You're a defensive player in the front seven. Where do your eyes normally yeah. take you, right? You're looking at 25, figuring he's going to follow the tight end. Yeah, it's big deal. The tight end follows the running back. Right, and the tight end's not in a normal alignment, right? So then I've got rules. Coach, you didn't tell me about that rule type thing. And so very good job, play design by Virginia Tech. When I say they, I have no idea who kind of makes the questions either. Well, Mac Brown, the winningest coach in the history of North Carolina. Of course, this is his second stint. And boy, talk about a guy that is just mentally in a different place now than he was when he was the head coach of Texas and is so open about it. I'm just having so much more fun yeah. being a head coach. Number now. one goal, he said, I I'm not coming back to not have fun. And I asked him, coach, through all this stuff, like, how are you doing it? Like, how are you doing it? He said, listen, these kids want to play. They want to play. And if they want to play, I want to coach. 20-yard line to start for Sam Howe. Cutback lane for Michael Carter. He's got six yards on first down. Amari Barno made the tackle. I think that's one of the things that probably we don't talk about enough with Michael Carter, Bob, is like really good vision. He's a great athlete, powerful, fast, really good vision when it comes back to comes to front side or backside holes. Sam Howell. That's dropped by De'Ami Brown. Let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. 
Hey guys, coaches say Sam Howell has grown immensely since last year. Not that he wasn't good as a freshman, but it making quicker decisions, getting the ball out of his hand. The flexibility and ability to adjust on his play calls and checks. In fact, his leadership role. He's not a Baker Mayfield, not going to scream and yell, but he's become a leader. And like the guys at the next level, he can have his face mask look one way and his eyes look the other. Take that front hand off the ball on a, on a pump fake, and that lets the DB check. So he, is, um, he has grown immensely since last year, and offensive coordinator Phil Longo says he is becoming the quarterback we all knew he could be. Well, third down and four here. As Howell scanning the field, and he's going to go down. Thrown down by Amari Barnos. How about this Virginia Tech defense starting to flip the script a bit after three straight Carolina touchdown drives to start the game? Well, first of all, it helps that Deami Brown's got two back-to-back -back drops. But credit for Virgi Virginia Tech because early on in this game, they were getting hurt with their blitzes. And now their blitzes are hurting North Carolina's defense. They flipped the momentum. It's a football Saturday in Chapel Hill at the Planetarium. Two-touchdown lead for Carolina. Cutback run for Herbert. And the Kansas transfer has got 11 yards and a first down. And normally he wears 21. You see the 25 he has on. Well, that's Frank Beamer's old number. So it's an honor to wear 25. Beamer would be proud of that run, too, because that's a very smart run. You saw him cut back to number five, Patrice Rene. This run game for Virginia Tech is all about getting the ball to the unblocked defender. Five was not a blocked defender there. It's on Khalil Herbert to understand where it is and then try to make that guy miss falling forward to create that first down. Herbert again. Finds another cutback lane. But Kansas, he was a productive player. But boy, he has been a difference maker since coming as a transfer, a grad transfer. To Virginia Tech playing a big role in both of their first two wins. It's funny, I asked Justin Fuente, like, what about him through two games of live action has surprised you that you didn't know? And he said he's faster than I thought. And this time he's there on blitz pickup. Burmeister keeps his eyes downfield and is able to throw one low. The Trey Turner scoops up. Again, great reaction by Burmeister to get himself out of trouble. Find Trey Turner scraping across the field. I think Virginia Tech got away with one there. There's an offensive lineman about six or seven yards downfield. Flag doesn't get thrown, so luck going their way. This is another good drive by Burmeister, and you see the athleticism. I think that's the thing. He's made two plays this drive that are above the X's and O's. That's why I think he needs to stay on the field. Quarterback run again. Burmeister with a stiff arm. First and goal for Virginia Tech. Great little ball fake. You're just getting that secondary to step towards that tailback, Herbert, for a second. Now you suck them in, and then can you beat them with speed to the outside? Burmeister doing it again. I really love that three-by-one, that trips formation for Virginia Tech offensively. They're lined up in it again. They got trips down to the bottom of the screen. Run back towards that boundary is a great play for them. Here comes the communication. This is the cat and mouse game, offense and defense. Herbert uses a stiff arm to the five-yard line at the pylon. Is he in? That's a touchdown for Virginia Tech. How patient on that run was Khalil Herbert. Look at this, how great is this? Patience, patience. Okay, now here's my scene, put my foot in the ground, make somebody miss. Cameron Kelly, can you make that tackle in the open field? No, and then the finish by Herbert. How about that violent left hand on the stiff arm? The tight rope down the sideline. Another impressive drive by this Virginia Tech run game. Last week against Duke, a Virginia Tech record, 358 yards, all purpose. For Khalil Herbert, he had 207 yards and two touchdowns rushing. This rushing touchdown is two unanswered now for Virginia Tech. Just like that, we've got a one-score game. Can't wait to watch Clemson and Alabama later on tonight. 
Returnable kick. Well, check that fair catch that'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. As Sam Howell with a handoff here to Javante Williams. He breaks a tackle. He's got a first down and more. All the way out to midfield. Does he stay in bounds? They'll say he stepped out near the 50. But can Miami compete with Clemson tonight? Could this North Carolina team compete with Clemson as well? Well, if Javante Williams going to run like that, I mean, makes Mathidi miss again. You have to make that open field tackle. And you see, like, this is just a, a, a high level of talent on North Carolina's offense. We fall in love with De'Ami Brown and Daz Newsom because they're great receivers. These two backs, Michael Carter and Javante Williams, are outstanding. So if their offense is going to click like this, they can beat Clemson. Absolutely. And can we go back to the narrative of the ACC? I fought this for a couple years. Like, I can't stand when people say that. <laughs> It's a really good conference. Williams, this time turned back after a gain of a couple as the walk-on forced to play free safety. Tyler Matheny comes up to make the stop. We talked about all the absences in this secondary for Virginia Tech. Tyler Matheny playing because Devon Diablo and Tyree Rogers both out at free safety. Keontae Jenkins, a rover, also out. Breon Murray. One of their top corners out, and they had their best corner, Caleb Farley, opt out before the season started to get ready for the draft. Carter, first down. And now, Virginia Tech with a couple of touchdowns has made this a one score game. Although Carter gets loose again, breaking tackles into the red zone and down to the five yard line. Ray Shard Ashby saved the touchdown talked about these backs to start this drop now it's Michael Carter's chance like just the ability to break the tackles this is the second time we've seen him kind of be athletic hurdle over somebody the ability to contact balance run away from people where's the hole it's a duo that is as good as anybody in the country it's a backwards pass caught by Newsom Daz Newsom somersaults inside the pylon for a touchdown Good ball placement by Howell on that throw. How about the block out front by Corrales and then Daz Newsom on the finish? I love that play call design. Surge for that pylon. Impressive said, drive by Carolina. As I said, that was a backwards pass. So that's actually a six yard touchdown run, technically, oh. for Daz Newsom. Yeah, that's going to make me sick. That's a bitter quarterback that obviously. Did you ever lose a touchdown pass because you threw the ball backwards? Probably. Yeah. Probably like 50 of them now that I think about it. Uh, I'm sure you would have had 50 more touchdown passes during your career if you threw a few like this. We are back on ESPN College Football, presented by PlayStation 5. North Carolina, three touchdowns to begin the game. Virginia Tech answered with two scores to make it a seven-point game, and the Heels just put together a touchdown drive. And now Virginia Tech back to the offense. We'll see what kind of field position they get. Might be pretty good. It is. All the way out to about the 37-yard line goes Khalil Herbert. Khalil Herbert moves the pile for a couple of yards. I think if you're, you're Virginia Tech right now, you're kind of in between this two-minute offense and almost four-minute offense, right? Four-minute offense is burn this clock out. Let's try to end the game usually. You want to burn this clock, but also you got to have a little bit of urgency and tempo because you only have about 2.30 on the clock left to get some points. Quarterback run for Burmeister. And Dan... Virginia Tech just snapped the ball with about 30 seconds Could have burned 30 more seconds off the on clock. the play clock. So if you want to make sure North Carolina does not end up with any time before halftime offensively, would you milk a little more clock here with your three timeouts? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have tried to take another 20 seconds or so off of that clock, knowing that it was second and 10, I'm going into third down. Now they snap it early again. It's a screen. Now to Tavion Robinson. Not much there. Carolina should pop a timeout. 
And that sets up fourth down. And North Carolina, they only have one timeout left, but it looks like they're going to save it. And you'd think Virginia Tech would probably let this clock wind down as far as possible. Will they go for it again on fourth down and three? Are they going to line up to go for it? They got a one-on-one -on -one matchup at the top with your tight ends flexed out. Is this the hard count again? Play clock down to five. And they will snap it. Burmeister, there's the slant incomplete. Trey Turner was hoping for a pass interference flag, and it does not look like he will get one. So now North Carolina has a timeout, and a minute and 11 on the clock, and great field position. Great job, right side of the screen. Look at the safeties. Playing inside out, Chapman and Morrison. Morrison knows I can let that receiver win on my inside. I've got Chapman rolling down for my help, and he kind of vices that receiver. Good job by North Carolina defense. Now you got 71 seconds left in this half if you're Sam Howell. The big thing here is just getting some form of a, a completion on first down. Like, let's get this two-minute drive going. Know you've got one timeout in your pocket. Short game. And with that timeout and a minute and four, the clock will roll. It'll be second down and three after the catch by Daz Newsom. Or rather, second down and six, pardon me. And your goal is to get a kickoff. Worst case scenario, you try to get a kickoff. They'll run it here with Michael Carter. And he's brought down shy of the first down, so that'll keep the clock rolling unless North Carolina spends their time out. Third down and one, but we're down to a half minute. There's a first down catch. That'll stop the clock. Deami Brown steps out. 22 seconds to go in the half. I think right now, if I'm Phil Long on North Carolina, I'm running something very similar play-wise. Like, Virginia Tech is playing soft on the outsides. They're not going to allow the ball to go over their head. Just try to get another five- or six-yard completion. Soft up top again. You can get an easy completion up top. How's going to look for the end zone? He's got a one-on-one, -on -one and he drops it in to Deami Brown for the touchdown. Wow. to a three-score lead for the Heels. That will take us to the halftime break with North Carolina on top, 35 to 14. Virginia Tech starts the third quarter with the ball. We'll see what they can do. Coming up after the break, and a word from our ABC stations. Kevin, Mark, and Booger, they'll have the State Farm halftime report. And welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. Just about set for the start of the second half. Virginia Tech will have the football, but they're down by 21. A late touchdown by North Carolina before halftime. Extends the lead. Bob Wachus in here with Dan Orlovsky. Dr. Jerry Punch is in Chapel Hill as well. Boy, talk about the balance for North Carolina offensively in the first half. 186 yards through the air, 186 yards on the ground. Well, I think they've got a lot of playmakers, and we talk about balance, and sometimes it's just about getting them touches, and they've done a good job offensively formationing some things. Sim Howe has been really good distributing the football, and right now, Bob, they're doing whatever they want. Virginia Tech beat up defensively. They're doing whatever they want to a Virginia Tech defense that right now is a little bit reeling. The most points that Virginia Tech has allowed in a half since 2002 against Miami. And as Back to Brent uh, Hinden Hooker to start off the second half at quarterback for Virginia Tech. You know, Justin Fuente said it's going to be, I don't know, we'll, we'll go off of feel. I, I feel would have told me to keep 
Burmeister on the football field. No gain for Khalil Herbert on first down. You know, I feel like Virginia Tech at least moved the football for the most part offensively with Burmeister. And I know they want to get Hendon back on the field and get in his snaps. But especially on this first drive, such a big drive, I would have, I would have liked to see Burmeister. Herbert, a yard shy of a first down. So without the penalty, it would have been third down and one. And that's exactly what we've got. And again, here's the tempo. And there's a first down carry for Khalil Herbert. I think Virginia Tech should stay with this. You don't have to get super fancy right now. Like, you've got something working here. You just got 12 on the field two snaps ago. You get a big run, a conversion on third and one. Continue to play with that tempo and challenge the communication of North Carolina defensively. Hooker pulls it back, flips one in the flat to Mitchell. And Mitchell runs a man over. He is a physical player at tight end. We saw a pancake block in the first half that set up one of the touchdown runs for Khalil Herford. And that time he pancaked the tackle. And they do a good job of kind of putting him in positions to play successfully. You know, like, oh, okay, we'll put you in our block game. We saw the handoff to him down in the red zone on a reverse. Okay, now we'll bring the naked around and get him out in space. Like, he's a really versatile player, a lot like Dalton Keene that they had last year. Raheem Blackshear spins for a first down, and we have another opportunity to check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Yeah, guys, Chuck with Justin Fuente at halftime about to the inconsistency of the offense, either either three and out or two long drives for a touchdown. And how do you find a consistency? He said, we've got to come back on this field and develop some tempo and some rhythm. We've got to get to our rhythm as far as the run game. It looks like what they're doing here early on. A quarterback draw, and Hooker took a shot. And he goes down and at the line of scrimmage by Jaleel Taylor. I, I think it speaks to the trust that Fuente has in Hennon Hooker. I mentioned it. This is a really big drive, and they're doing a nice job of moving down the football field, but the trust to put him in to start this second half. Tunnel screen, and there's no tunnel there. Raheem Blackshear dropped behind the line. Another good read by Jalil Taylor. I mean, Tamon Fox just playing as an outside defensive end type of player. Kind of feels Darren saw the tackle, got him moving out and goes, I'm going to go blow this play up. And now third and 19, usually third down, it's like, okay, here comes the blitz package out of Jay Bateman in the North, this North Carolina defense. I think they might play a little bit softer here, but if you're Hendon Hooker, you got to be thinking, okay, if I get eight or nine yards, then we're potentially in field goal range. Here comes a blitz. A slip and a fall on the back shoulder throw to a wide open receiver. It's the same play they hit in the first half. You motion out that tight end. You guess what pressure's coming. He's got him on that rail, that real wheel route up the sideline, and Hooker just misses him. Drake Delulis, the tight end, could not have been more wide open. And it that would have like, gotten them into field goal range yeah, at the very like least. Hooker's thinking like, hey, you're going to settle. You're going to kind of pause a little bit. And the tight end kept going up the sideline. According to Justin Fuente, they are in field goal range. Here's Brian Johnson to try what would be a career-high 55-yarder. And it is online. And it, it's good. His previous career long, 54, he betters that by a yard. So obviously the coach knew his kicker and knew he had the leg for it. Virginia Tech had seven taken off the board, but they do put three back on. A missed opportunity a moment ago. Uh, Dan will explain in a moment for Virginia Tech. This could have easily been a Drake Dulius touchdown and ends up being three instead. Well, so Carolina's going to bring the corner blitz, right? And what they're going to do for this play, Virginia Tech, is they're going to run a post at that receiver and then a kind of a rail shot to put this safety going over the top in the bind. It's the perfect play call. You guess the blitz. The safety, the receiver runs right at the safety. Now look, that safety has closed his hips. He is taking that receiver. Just throw the ball up the sideline if you're Hendon Hooker, and it's a walk-in touchdown. 
your coach just dialed up the perfect play versus the blitz, you have to, have to be able to hit that in that crucial moment. Their defense is looking for a stop now, and Michael Carter begins this drive for North Carolina with a gain of a couple. That third and 19 miss makes me think, I coached my kids flag football on Saturday morning. <laughs> Second play of the game to that dialed up an absolute gem. We practiced it all night. The kid that we called it for ran the wrong way. I'm sitting there, I'm throwing my dry erase board up in the air. I gotta imagine that was Fuente on the sidelines. Cut back run for Carter. He's two yard shot of a first down. Now just to lend perspective to your story, the children that you're coaching are how old? Eight. Eight. Got it. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. You'd be losing your mind if an eight-year-old runs the wrong route. Jacob, That's, what are you, know you what? doing? That is inexcusable. I mean, you drew it up. It that kid, play call. that eight-year-old has to run the right route there. I can't believe you left him perfect in the game. Perfect play call. I'm looking at Jacob. I go, Jacob's the kid. I go, Jacob, what are you doing? He goes, I just, I saw some guy running the other way, so I ran that way. I looked at him like, yeah, it's I, bad coaching. I'd take that kid's scholarship away in a heartbeat. <laughs> The C's part. Easy third down pickup for Javante Williams. Boy, third and three, and he wasn't touched until he had picked up six or seven yards. How about the left side of this offensive line just creating holes? Azuda just kind of sitting back on that defensive tackle, flowing over the top. I, I, we, I said at the beginning of this week, we all fall in love with these receivers. I'm telling you, the two backs, Carter and Williams, are fantastic players. Well, they're getting blown off the ball. And it is a gain of about 14 yards, Doc, as the Virginia Tech defense is struggling. Yeah, we remind the folks just joining our telecast that we told you at the top of the show that Virginia Tech is down 15 players a day. The bulk of those, nine are on the defensive side and most of the defensive secondary. And then the one guy they were going to depend on, Chamari Connor, got booted from the game due to a targeting call. So the coverage are pretty bare defensively for the Hokies. Yeah, they are trying to patch it together, especially on the back end, as best they can. Shovel pass to Javante Williams. And he is inbounds and picking up yards to the red zone. Carrying tacklers down to the 16-yard line. Get the ball in the perimeter. A little shovel pass from Howell. Look at the blocking on the outside. Daz Newsom fighting for him. Deami Brown fighting for him. And then Javante Williams again. Just good pace, good vision, cutback, finisher as a runner. This is a complete football team offensively. And this is going to be the challenge for Virginia Tech the rest of this game and for teams moving forward. How do you match up? How do you stop all the talent, especially on the perimeters? Here's Carter after a 29-yard catch and run by Javante Williams. Michael Carter caps the drive with a 16-yard touchdown run. teams in college football, Dan, have this one-two combination at running back? I think they're the best in the country one-two wise, duo-wise, because they're both very versatile. How about the patience right there by Carter? Like, just the, the spatial patience, patience, and then the ability to get back inside of that hole. But they're smart, they're tough, they're good in protection, they're confident, they're selfless, right? You gotta be selfless as well, knowing some, someone else might get a couple carries of yours. Six play touchdown drive and five of the six plays were runs and a shovel pass. So made it pretty easy on Sam Howe as Michael Carter. He finds the end zone for the first time today. North Carolina though looks unstoppable right now offensively against Virginia Tech. We just saw a huge drive, right? Uh, those tailbacks getting the ball a ton. And... Ended Hooker still in a quarterback for Virginia Tech. Play action to start this drive. Floats one up the seam, tipped, and hauled in with one hand by James Mitchell. He already has a touchdown on the ground, and he's dragged in tacklers all the way down to the red zone. Kind of living right. That ball almost gets picked off by Chapman. How about the hand-eye coordination by Mitchell to tip it up, track it down, turn a bad play into a huge one for their offense. They'll run it with Herbert. He's down inside the 10-yard line before he stood up. Gain of about eight and a half. It'll be 
second down and a long yard. Call it second and two. Jeremiah Gimmel made the stop. Tempo for Virginia Tech. Hendon Hooker will keep it. First and goal. Good job by Virginia Tech this drive right now of a lot of pre-snap motion. Some quarterback run. Obviously, it's generated by that big play by Mitchell. This is that three-by-one formation that's been really effective running towards. This has got to be quarterback run now with that motion. There it is. Straight quarterback run. And a touchdown for Hendon Hooker. Great job using the motion. That back's going to come all the way out here. You're going to move, remove somebody from the box. Right? Watch the defender go with him. Now that one extra guy's out. You see the point of attack, Mitchell, down block, pull that guard. Beautiful job by Mitchell getting up to the backer. And then Hooker dipping right underneath. 42-24. Maybe it's not over yet as Virginia Tech will put their defense back out on the field. Open for a stop, Doc. And Hendon Hooker last season, after he took over as the starting quarterback for Ryan Willis started eight games and in the eight games that he started Virginia Tech averaged 36 yards a game and they'll try the surprise onside kick and see if they can steal a possession and it looks like they will Quincy Patterson out there trying to take the ball back and Johnson got it Brian Johnson executes it perfectly and a special teams surprise play for the Hokies. Works to perfection. What a great kick. Catch him off guard. Kick it to yourself. Look at the defender. That front line takes one step back. That ball goes 10 yards. He catches it right at about 11 yards. Has to go 10 before he can touch it. What a great job of calling that play. And it always comes down to execution. And now you're feeling relatively good if you're Virginia Tech. You feel like you've got some stuff in your run game that you can take advantage of, especially going back towards 82 Mitchell. Herbert. Turn back after a gain of a couple. Just when you thought North Carolina might run away from Virginia Tech. The Hokies score a touchdown and are able to steal a possession with a surprise onside kick. And in Hooker, fading one down the sideline. Broke it up. Well diagnosed by Kyler McMichael. It's outstanding by McMichael. Back to the quarterback. Okay, look at back to the quarterback. You're in man-to-man -man coverage. Now watch the left hand come out here. Watch the left hand pop right there. That's the play right there. Play the ball. And if you can't see the ball, play the receiver's hands. Really good job by McMichael. Remember, these third and longs that they've had some success with Virginia Tech, it's been about motioning somebody and anticipating that pressure. I think they really need to rely. Here comes that motion with Mitchell. Is there pressure coming? They're going to run it with Herbert. He finds a cutback lane. He's got a first down and more. Still on his feet. Khalil Herbert looking for the pop. He's got it for the touchdown. How great is this by Virginia Tech's offensive line? Go up. Now watch it cut right. There. Beat that safety that's flying upfield. And just continue to attack downfield if you're Herbert. Trey Turner down there throwing the block. What a play call. By Brad Cornelson and Justin Fuente in this Virginia Tech offense. 42-31. It's an 11-point game with five minutes to go in the third. 
And again, Herbert wears the Frank Beamer 25. What I thought was awesome about the story of the honor of wearing Coach Beamer's old 25, you have to play special teams to get the honor of wearing that number. So we're not just going to give it to a star player on one side of the ball or the other because nobody in college football, I think, valued special teams as a head coach more than Frank Beamer. You got to earn it, right? And he does. He does he, pardon me. He has earned it, man. He's, can Virginia Tech's defense now get a stop? Javante Williams is met by Rayshard Ashby. I can't. I, I, I'm really excited about that play call on third down for Virginia Tech. I, it's such good coaching by their offense. We used we playing against like a coach like Rex Ryan. You know he's going to throw crazy pressures at you. And I remember Gary Kubiak at one point being like, "Listen, we're just going to call a run on third and long and see if we can hurt them." And that's exactly what. Virginia Tech offensively did there, and now they've got some life in this third quarter. And now they've forced a third down. They breathed some life back into this defense as Javante Williams has stopped after a gain of maybe three and a half. So this is third down and a long four from the 31-yard line for North Carolina. And the challenge for Virginia Tech defensively is like, okay, third and four, this could be a run. This could be an RPO because the run game's been so good. They've been getting such good push. So you got to be really good with your eyes if you're a defender for Virginia Tech. Don't just sell out to the run. It's been a while since Sam Howell's gone downfield with the football, and he has a drop here by Michael Carter. And in an 11-point game, Virginia Tech is about to get the ball back. Doesn't it just feel right now momentum a little bit, you know, like come out, score a touchdown. Wait, our coach decides to go onside kick. You get it, and then all of a sudden another gutsy play call on third down leads to a huge touchdown. You get off the field defensively. And to me, the amazing part of that is twice in this game, it has felt like it was over. Yes. This one returnable for Tavion Robinson, but he gets cut down right away. And let's see if Hendon Hooker can put together another scoring drive. He'll hand one off to Khalil Herbert. He'll pick up close to four. I just feel Virginia Tech like having some success running the football right now in these North Carolina safeties. Cameron Kelly, Chapman, they're getting nosy. This, you're getting close to a point where a ball is going over your head on a play action pass. There is the play action. Hooker wanted to go downfield with it. Instead, he'll tuck it under and run for a first down and protect the football. Surprised he doesn't throw it. He's got a big post over the top. It does, it, listen, if you don't see it, if it's not there, it's a play call early in this drive. I love the decision by Hooker. I, coach, I didn't see it. All right, then tuck it, go get a first down, and give us a new opportunity to call plays. Herbert tries to turn the corner and does. Submarines out to the 45-yard line. I got to be honest, I didn't know James Mitchell was this good of a blocker. Right side of your screen, right? Right there. Look at it. Start to turn, turn, turn. I mean, we've mentioned a couple times today, four or five times, how good of a blocker he is. He's a really good pass catcher. Usually you don't see that. You know, the pass catching tight end still be willing and able to go be a part of the blocking. He's been impressive as a blocker today. Jet sweep, Raheem Blackshear. He's got another Virginia Tech first down as they have crossed the 50. Twice in this game, Virginia Tech was down by three touchdowns. Yeah. 21 to nothing, blitzed right off the opening jump. And then when they cut it to 21-14, North Carolina came back with a couple of scores and made it 35-14. And yet they have continued to counterpunch and answer. And they're driving to try and make this a one-score game. Herbert. 
to the 44-yard line, a gain of three. Yeah, I'd even say this. We came onto the show today, and we talked about everything they've overcome, how it's impressed, how impressive it was that they just played the games, let alone look good and 2-0. Uh, me, right now, just impression-wise, I don't even care what happens the rest of this game. I'm so impressed with Virginia Tech. The fight, the commitment, the leadership, the not giving up. They could have quit and had a ton of excuses, and they haven't done it yet. Play action. Hooker dumps one to Mitchell in the flat, makes a man miss, and lowers the boom on Cameron Kelly and picks up another first down. James Mitchell making himself some money today. Watch right side of your screen. Okay, now I said a quarterback, give me the ball. All right, now go make a play in space. Gamel, you can't get me down. Finish it. James Mitchell's earned himself some money today to become a big time player for this offense. Virginia Tech down at one point, 42 to 17. But they've cut the lead to 42-31. What might be the final play of the third quarter. Play action for Hooker. That ball batted down at the line. Patrice Rene coming on a corner blitz. Was able to knock it down. It'll be second down and 10. A top. Number five coming. Okay, this is great cornerback play. Can't get home. Ball's gonna come out quickly. Make sure you bat it down. Blitzers, you're not just running to a blind space. Still have your awareness. Really good job by the senior Renee of understanding I'm not getting home. Let me still impact the play. A step back for Hooker. Down the sideline, wide open. Tavion Robinson, touchdown! Virginia Tech will go for two to try and make this a three-point game. I'm thinking run. A two-point try for the Hokies. Hooker to the goal line, and that's broken up. So Virginia Tech has cut the lead down to five. And you have to think with the last four possessions, this is Hendon Hooker's game the rest of the way. Well, I mean, we came out of the second half. I said, I would have played Burmeister swinging a miss on that one. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm up here and Fuente's down there. But I think that he's given them the ability to throw the football downfield. They've got some big plays in their pass game and probably just a little bit more comfort in their offense. You know, we, they had scored their touchdown before, and they, he just walked over to the sideline and, and uh, had great leadership. Going over to his teammates, encouraging them, telling them there's plenty of game left, and he was right. Michael Carter out to about the 25-yard line on the return. And time of possession, a 10-minute advantage for Virginia Tech. And a one-yard gain on first down. Monte Williams brought down to end the third quarter. What a comeback by Virginia Tech. As Michael Carter made a big play earlier, but Virginia Tech has responded. We'll come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Justin Fuente's Hokies have looked dead multiple times against Mac Brown's UNC Heels. And yet here we start the fourth quarter with North Carolina. Facing second down and 10 in a five-point game. They'll run it with Javante Williams. He'll be three yards short of the first down. And last season, no team was better in the ACC. Only two teams were better in all of FBS in terms of fourth quarter scoring advantage. A dominant performance last year by North Carolina. And this year, already, they are outscoring their opponents 23-6 to six in the fourth quarter. We'll see what happens today. And that gives you comfort. You know, that gives you comfort as a player. You know, where you're like, okay, I've been in this situation. I know how to operate. I know how to think. I know how to handle the pressure. Now, sideways pass. Michael Carter gets a block and a first down. I've been so impressed by Watch the right side of the screen, the blocking by Daz Newsom in the slot right there. Look at him. Get on that out, the defender's outside edge and just allow Carter continue to follow. I've been really impressed by those wide receivers of Carolina blocking. 
Talking to football coaches all these years, it's amazing how excited they get when they talk about wide receivers that block. Yeah. It's just one of those things that every coach loves. Michael Carter turns the corner, breaks a tackle, first down and more. Sam Howe, shuttle pass to Javante Williams. He gets to the edge again. Steps out of bounds with a gain of 20 more yards. And I think they'll mark him out at the 12-yard line, so it'll be first and 10 again for Carolina. Look at the right side of the screen again. Watch Daz Newsom come in. He's coming. He's coming. There he is. Watch his feet running. I, we Listen, Bob, you had talked about, you know, coaches getting excited for receivers that block. You know why? Because they're not brought in to block, and they're not paid to block at the NFL. It's selfless. Sam Howell, first and 10 at the 12. Play action, out on the edge, broken tackle. Daz Newsom to the pylon. Touchdown. Just an RPO like we saw all first half. That nickel blitzes off Newsom. Okay, now give me your, give me a place to throw that football. The corner tries to knife inside. Deami Brown gets a piece, and now it's just effort. Now it's just effort and fight to get into that end zone. Daz Newsom is doing everything for this football team today. Just a great player who's got great toughness, quicks out of that slot, but just the, just the will to go make the play. I mean, that's, that's, that's exactly what Phil Longo wants. Like, hey, man, th that's not a great play design. He didn't just draw something up in the lab right there. It was just like, our guy's really good. If their guy leaves him alone, throw him the football. We recruited him for a reason. Go make a play. Well, this is an important extra point to take the lead up to 12. And now it will be two touchdowns that Virginia Tech will need. An offensive explosion between these two teams. 528 total yards for North Carolina. All of the really cute faces that you see right there in the middle are Mac Brown's grandchildren sitting in between. Uh, Julius Peppers down on the left. Mitchell Trubisky over on the right. See, saw Giovanni Bernard. We were talking to Mac Brown. He said, yeah, my grandkids, the cutouts, will be sitting next to Mitchell Trubisky. They have no idea who Mitchell Trubisky is, but my granddaughters will be sitting right next to him. Hopefully they're off Twitter. And how good is the rest of the ACC? Because all of these teams now being ranked like North Carolina in the top ten. And breaking tackles is Khalil Herbert. He's got a first down. But until one of these other teams, like a Notre Dame, like a Miami, like a North Carolina, like a Virginia Tech, goes out there and actually goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clemson, sure. you wonder if it's for real. Yeah, of course. I mean, Clemson's kind of in a class of their own right now. But I think what's happening is we're starting to see the ACC with recruiting, with player development. You know, Virginia Tech's got 33 wins since Puente got there. That's second best in the conference behind Clemson. So there's a really good team as well. A rollout for Hooker, cuts the field in half and short hops it for Trey Turner. Well, this season, Notre Dame counts as an ACC team because they're playing an ACC schedule. We've got five teams all ranked inside the top 20, four of them ranked inside the top 10, and none have lost yet. Something will give between number one and number seven tonight. Yeah, I think you're seeing depth. I think you're seeing that it's not necessarily just a top-heavy conference. But there's depth within this conference with a bunch of good football teams. Hooker out of the pocket. Buying time and throws it away. Virginia Tech plays Clemson second to last game of the season. And if North Carolina is going to play Clemson, it would have to come in the ACC title game as they are not on their regular season schedule. This is a fascinating third down for Virginia Tech offensively because I've talked all game that North Carolina's this pressure defense. Less third downs that Virginia Tech has seen it, they've heard it. They missed the wheel route up the sidelines, but then they had that long run. It'll be very interesting to see if North Carolina just decides, you know what, we're going to play some man coverage and we're not going to try to get too fancy and expose ourselves. you got to try to find a matchup if you're handing Hooker that you like. Four man rush. Hooker, the pocket collapses and down he goes. That time, the four-man rush got there. Tamon Fox 
Helped out on the pressure by Tamari Fox. The Fox brothers arrive at the quarterback. It's exactly what they do. They play some man pressure, and the Fox brothers just effort to get around that. Hendon Hooker's got to hold the ball for just a little bit longer because of that sticky coverage. And North Carolina finally gets off the field in the second half. That is the first sack of the game for North Carolina. And Tamari enjoyed that one. Fair catch is made by Daz Newsom. The defense steps up and makes a play for North Carolina. Stops a rolling Virginia Tech offense. Matt gets the football back to Sam Howell. Another swing pass into the left flat. This time, Javante Williams gets a couple of blocks, and it's about 15 more yards for the North Carolina offense. They've got impact players on both sides of the ball that are related because not only the Fox brothers on defense, but Diami and Choffrey Brown. That's a dangerous pair of wide receivers on the offensive side of the ball. It's good recruiting. It's two Sell for it to one. the parents, you know? That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll take both of them. Well, it certainly speaks to how much fun the older brothers have and when the other younger brother follows them a couple of years later. As Deami Brown has had a big day. Three catches, 86 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. Here's Michael Carter to the 40-yard line, picks up three. And right now with 10 minutes to go in our game, Virginia Tech's trying to get a stop defensively because they'd love to turn this game into that type of a close one with a few minutes to go. How about North Carolina wearing the clock down here? Michael Carter into the secondary again. Watch the safety, 34 go across the screen. He's following that tight end, and he's supposed to be there to fill on that block. Tisdale follows that tight end when that ball gets snapped, and that creates that huge seam. And I like this out of North Carolina, right? We've, we've had a couple games this year already where we go, okay, this team is an offensive tempo team. At what point do you start to go... We're, we got we to gotta work the clock here a little bit. And they're right around 10 minutes into this fourth quarter. 12-point lead. They are now wearing out this clock. First and 25. Michael Carter. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? A house call on first and 25 for North Carolina as Michael Carter takes it to the... The end zone, 62 yards, another North Carolina touchdown. A couple of things about this play that make it happen. The tight end's going to go across. Watch 34 follow him, okay? And then Matheny, you're going to be the guy that's driving down and replacing. 34, leave. Matheny, you are there. Make that play. You're dropped right down in that box where that ball is going to get run. Strictly for that play. The tight end takes Tisdale out. You gotta replace and make that tackle. Great job by Michael Carter running away. Well, Tyler Matheny is a walk-on safety third stringer, but we talked about all of the COVID-related absences and the injuries in the secondary for Virginia Tech. Devine Diablo normally starts at that spot, backed up by Tyree Rogers. They're both out. So that's a walk-on. Trying to stay with Michael Carter. Not gonna happen. What a performance for North Carolina at all of their skill position spots, but especially on the ground. The Heels have 364 yards rushing. You got that many yards, both of your running backs are going to be having career days. And Michael Carter, 214 yards. That is a career high. Will Herbert on the run back. And he gets stood up. Trick play. The reverse and the pass to Hendon Hooker. And he dodges tacklers and gets to the 45-yard line of North Carolina. Davion Robinson on the reverse from Turner found Hooker wide open. This is great little handoff. Pitch it back to Tavion Robinson, the lefty. You never know when a lefty is going to pop up. And a great little throw to Hendon Hooker. Listen, I, I just love that Virginia Tech is continuing to fight and continuing to believe that there's a chance they're going to win this football game if they just continue to strive 
for the next play. Although they can't afford too much, Time. let's look over to the sideline and let the play clock wind all the way down. Their defense can't get a stop, down 56 to 37. They have to maximize every second they've got on the clock. And here they snap it with two seconds on the play clock and run a dive to Blackshear. That's a good point. That's a really good point is like, we, we, we know we want to try to get to ideal plays and points are paramount as well, but is it worth to try to get 15 yards in 30 seconds off the clock? You know, like, you've got to be in two-minute tempo right now. Get as quickly to the ball as you can, and that ball should be getting snapped before 30 seconds gets on the play clock. This is too much time getting taken off this clock. Cutback run. Khalil Herbert, close to a first down. Like, they should be running up to the line of scrimmage. It's third and less than one. Like, let's run up to the line of scrimmage, get a first down, clock will stop, and then maybe we can get it to taking a shot or something like that. It is a first down run. As Herbert will stop the clock. Tamari Fox, by the way, was the injured Tar Heel off the field. And quarterback draw for Hendon Hooker. He has spun forward right to the first down line of the game. Five and a half minutes to go. He gets the first down. So that stops the clock just for the moment, but now it starts again. And Hendon Hooker. And the Virginia Tech offense back at the line of scrimmage. Play action. Hooker up the seam. He's got a hook up. He's got a touchdown with James Mitchell with 5.20 to go. You have to go for two here if you are Virginia Tech. And their offense will do just that. Really good play call. Using that motion to get eyes of the defenders in the wrong way. And, of course, James Mitchell catches a touchdown. Last time they went for two was that pick pop, that pick play where they try to get a rub one way or the other. That bunch up top right now. And in Hooker, low snap, quarterback run. He's got it. So Hendon Hooker gets the two, and North Carolina costs themselves a pair. Having too many on the field. Is there still hope in this game for Virginia Tech? Great now job. Now. Great job by Hooker following that tight end. A shootout between North Carolina and Virginia Tech. 56 to 45. The Tar Heels have the lead. Now, Dan, normally, if I would tell you in a vacuum, an 11 point game with five minutes and 20 seconds to go, would you kick the ball deep? You probably do. Yes. But Virginia Tech can't stop North Correct. Carolina. That's why. Yeah. I think it's a great point, Bob. Like, so yeah, normally you kick it deep, but right now you try try an onside kick to try to get the ball back. And there is the attempt. It is loose and covered up. Like, you got to play some man-to-man -man coverage, force a d difficult throw and difficult catches, and go stop the run. Quarterback run, beautifully done by Sam Howe. He is loose to the sideline. Well, that time, all the numbers went after the fake to Javante Williams. Good play call by North Carolina there. Giving Sam Howell the opportunity to tuck it and run. Javante Williams, five yards, four and a half minutes to go. I think if you're Virginia Tech, too, like, you're telling your defense two things. We're going to do some run blitzes, difference between pass blitz and run blitz. Punch out the football. North Carolina milking as much clock as they can. And it's another first down for Javante Williams. I don't think you're thinking timeouts just yet if you're Virginia Tech. You only have two left. Remember, they started the second half and used one. If you get a first down stop and it gets the second and ten, second and nine, something like that, then I think you pop your timeout. You got to keep your eyes on the quarterback. This, you playing man-to-man -man coverage, defense selling out, you got to make sure that you keep your eyes 
on a keeper quarterback run. They'll play power football here with Javante Williams. And now, will Virginia Tech call a timeout? They probably should timeout. with 3.01 to go. And yes, second timeout of the half. they will call a timeout. timeout. They'll step aside for 30 seconds. Second down and six. As Virginia Tech desperate to get a stop. Javante Williams won't let them have it. Down to the 13-yard line. It's another first down. And only one timeout left for the Hokies. I think a lot of people came into this game really nationally going, okay, North Carolina, are you for real? Like, are you legit? I would actually argue that I've learned more about Virginia Tech today. With all due respect to North Carolina, you guys have been amazing today. They'll run it again with Javante Williams. And really, North Carolina at this point could take a knee. They could take the clock all the way down to about a minute and a half to go. If they just kill maybe seven or eight extra seconds with a couple of kneel downs, they can go victory formation at this point because Virginia Tech called their last time out with the clock stopped. Yeah, but you know why coaches are weird? Because they don't want the kneel down to, to, to be a negative yard. I've had coaches say that don't take a knee. It's four yards off of our overall yardage total. I think the yardage total today is going to work out for Carolina. As that is a very rare play for zero or minus yards for their offense. They have run 64, now 65 plays in the game. They're averaging 10 and a half yards per play today. I mean, snap the ball, and it's a North Carolina first down. I mean, think about it if you're Virginia Tech. You have 500 yards of offense. You're 50% on third down, which is outstanding. You don't turn the football over. You win the time of possession. And you were never even in control of the football game. It just speaks to how explosive North Carolina was offensively today. So Mac Brown now will put his team in victory formation as Sam Howe will kill as much time as he can. And there's about a five-second differential. So on fourth down, if Sam Howe just goes back, runs around a little bit, that'll end the game. You think Mac Brown's having some fun now? We talked to him Good yesterday. Him, right? Boy, he said, really, my entire goal now is to do, and he was very honest, what I did not allow myself to do mm. when I was at Texas. And that is have fun. Enjoy it. And not right? worry too much and let the kids have fun and have this, the overall spirit of our program, not the weight of the world on our shoulders. It's hard to not have that happen in Austin. It's a different vibe in Chapel Hill, certainly, from a football standpoint, but he's accomplishing his goal. Yeah, and I also give him credit because he also was very blunt and honest saying, I know that, I know that I'm a little bit in a different place with my career than some other coaches who can't necessarily do that. I don't like this. Well, out of Holly Field. Next Holly Field player. gave a little shot to Sam Howell after Howell had taken a knee. And now you don't want to see an ugly end to this game. And the coaches are out there trying to separate the two sides. A couple of unsportsmanlike conduct flags, it looks like, have been thrown on Virginia Tech. Holly Field's a really good player. And I guess if you're the Virginia Tech defense and you've got 661 yards yeah, after the play, dropped on you. Sportsman like conduct, number four, Virginia Tech. That is his first unsportsman like of the game. Half the distance to the goal, it will be first and ten for Virginia Tech. And I thought that was really cool. Like it was, it was about just being out there, working with the kids, being part of the football routine. I, th I think one of the things that stands about this North Carolina program and their coaching staff, they really love what they're doing. Virginia Tech ends at 56 to 45 is the final. North Carolina over the Hokies. After a quick break here on ABC, Texas Tech takes on Iowa State in Ames for Dan Arlovsky and Dr. Jerry Punch. I'm Bob Wachusen. Thanks for watching.